hi everyone it's me B at Kelly Sunflower so I thought I'd hop on today and unbox a deck review and the deck is called Curious Travels Tarot Deck by Amelia Rosier so I think this deck might have been an indie deck at some point but it's been picked up mass market by US Games so let's put the back of the box it says Bring your inquisitive mind and your sense of whimsy as you embark on your tarot adventure for where there is no journey to be had without a curious traveller. Composed of charming watercolour illustrations, Curious Travels Tarot Deck shares precious tales of wonder, love, disappointment and new beginnings. These insightful stories are ever-changing and when reading with this delightful deck, you become as much a part of the narrative as the elephant lovers and the wise owl hierophant. You will find strength in the lion's gaze and hope as you dance among the stars. Your great adventure awaits. So this deck includes 79 gold file scented cards with linen finish and an 84 page illustrated guidebook. Okay, so let's open this up so the box it hasn't got a thumbnail but it, it's a lift off and it's quite easy to lift off it's not stiff or anything and at the side of the box it's got curious travel deck and it's got like the pentacles there so I'm assuming that's the king of pentacles it's got like the, the US game kind of logo and I'm assuming this is probably the ace of wands okay so let's lift it up so you get a guidebook which I put to one side and then the cards lift off with this oops and he's a busted it with this ribbon which is broken Anyhow, so let's have a look at the guidebook first. It's got quite a nice feel to it. And at the back it says US Game System INC. So it's got a nice um, index where it talks about the introduction, it talks about the major arcana, the minor arcana, the wands, cups, swords, pentacles, and there's a bonus card. And it's got like a curious travel spread and about the creator. So let's see how big the introduction. I'll read the introduction for you. The curious travel deck created by Amelia Rosier is comprised of 79 original watercolour illustrations. This deck is a product of love and inspiration created with materials inherited from her grandmother. Throughout the creative process, each card was hand-drawn in a ballpoint pen and painted in watercolour and details with sparkling gold leaf paint. This deck is heavily inspired by the Rider Waite deck in structure and in symbolism. From the 22 card of the Major Arcana to the four suits of the Minor Arcana, Curious Travels incorporates new themes throughout the the decks such as the diverse animal kingdom, throw more thick characters and expressive stylations of traditional cards. The art of tarot has been interpreted and reinterpreted for centuries, grounded by the artistic symbolism within each card. These symbols are brought together to create small stories throughout the deck. Stories of love, pain, excitement, new beginnings, wonder and, and ever so much more. As long as the art of tarot reading exists, these stories will remain fluid and ever-changing to provide insight into one's specific life experience. What makes this deck special is not only its traditional value, but also its ability to tell new stories. With just one flip through of this deck, you will find strength underneath a lion's glaze Wander with knights and kings and dance beside the stars. When, re when reading with this deck, 
or by simply viewing your card, you'll become part of the story and an important one for that. For there is no journey to be had without a curious travel traveller. I think this is the same writing or similar to what's at the back of the box. Okay, so it's got the armor, and then it hasn't got much. It's got like I say half a page. Um, so and, and and a little picture. So it's got the number and the name of the archetype. It's got an upright position and the reverse position. So I read you out the four. The four is bright and optimistic, eager to jump into the unknown. He descends from another world up in the trees to reach his hand into the mouth of a crocodile, the reality of which seems to be the least thing on his mind. Instead, he's a dreamer, thinking about what might happen if he reaches the golden flower he desperately wants. Upright meaning, you are running towards a goal, blinded by the wonder of mysticism. Your curiosity can open doors to wonderful and amazing things, but make sure to always consider the different variables in every situation. Think things through. And then the reverse meaning says, you are behaving recklessly, blinded by your own excitement and curiosity. While your ambition is admirable, you might be sprinting down a road that leads to nowhere. Worst case scenario, you, your ignorance may lead to devastation. Pause for a moment so that you can, so that you might recognise your thoughts before things get out of hand. Okay, so let's see how the minor arcana is um, labelled up because sometimes they skimp on the minor meanings. But it looks like in this book that it's the same sort of um, layout. So look, for the wands, you get the little picture, you get the name of the card, an upright and a reverse meaning. And it's about half a page explanation for each card, which is quite good. And the illustrations are in colour. So you've got a bonus card, which is called the Travellers. The Travellers card was created by the artist specifically for the curious travels tarot deck. It signifies forward motion and adventure. It's optional for the reader to include it. If pulled in a reading, it has same meaning regardless of orientation. And that meaning is you are bound for fresh experiences and it's important not to lo lose yourself in the wave of new opportunities and fresh faces. Take time to reflect over past memories and cherish them as you step into something new. Do your best to document these new adventures as you begin. Start a photo book, video diary or journal. Your future self will thank you for it. it sounds kind of similar to the full card meaning. So you've also got like a tarot spread here and it's a five card tarot spread and it's called the Curious Traveller Spread. So position one is you are itching for a new adventure because and then Two, before starting out, keep in mind. Three, as you act, as you action, be wary of. Four, how do you see yourself changing throughout pursuit of these goals? And five, as you go f forward, what should you hold close to your heart? And then it's got a bit about the creator. It's got a nice um, photo of her. It's, I like to see what the creator looks like and I also like to know about them as well. I just, I just like it when a guidebook includes the kind of creator. Amelia Rosaire is a young illustrator from Connecticut who has always been very fond of creative and mystical things. As an illustrator, she tries to tell stories whenever she can through any medium possible. Watercolour is especially close to her heart. Her interest in tarot began when she discovered the artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith, illustrator of the traditional Rider Waite tarot deck. When the quarantine of 2020 drove the world into lockdown, she decided to explore tarot further by creating a deck of her own. She currently resides in Providence, Rhode Island, with two small rabbits, Soup and Meatball. Oh, what a nice names. <laughs> And then um, it's got her um, Instagram handle and TikTok handle, her Gmail address and her website. 
and then it's got some it's got one two three pages for notes so i think that that's quite a nice little guidebook i also like that the writing is not too small and it's readable because i find that a lot of um guidebooks they tend to have small writing because the author is trying to create as much right print on the page and you know it's not always legible for someone like me so I'm, I'm glad that the guidebook is legible and it's comfortable on the eyes okay so let's have a look at the cards now reason I don't know why I just assumed that the edges would be gold but I guess the gold foil is inside the cards so let's compare the card size to a regular RWS deck so this is my Abano weight and as you can see these cards they're not quite oracle size I think they're smaller than an oracle but they're definitely on the larger size for a tarot they're just like you know like maybe like an inch or half an inch wider and the length as well so it's just a little bit bigger than a regular RWS card um, let's have a look at the backs of the cards so these cards are definitely linen I find linen cards quite slippery but that's just my own personal opinion but um, the backs are reversible which is cool love that this kind of reminds me of the High Priestess with the curtain and the Half Crescent Moon and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's have a flip through of the cards. So you've got the Fall and, you know, she's teasing the alligator, you know. Wrong, you know, any wrong mess she can fall into that alligator's mouth you know, so on and so forth. So you've got the Magician. This is an interesting depiction of the Magician. You know, he's in wildlife. And you can see all the different suits, but it's quite a nice depiction. The High Priestess. Beautiful. She's got the pomegranate. She's got the two pillars, the Half Crescent Moon. The curtain is over her face like a veil. It's a really nice depiction. You've got the Empress that looks pregnant and she looks like she's in nature. This is the Emperor who's got a ram head. I like his ankh goes round his neck. That's the key of life, that ankh. Beautiful. The Hierophant is depicted by an owl. And he's got his pupils there. The three crowns on his head. I mean, you can see Rider Waite influences in this deck. The Lovers. Beautiful. The Chariot. It's black and white horses. And you can see it's nice. Beautiful shrimp card. And he's playing, he seems quite tame, playing with his owner, the hermit. He's following the star, love, her, love the dance of the card as well. The Wheel of Fortune, Justice. This is an interesting depiction of a Justice card. She's not blindfolded, but her eyes are closed. She's walking on a tightrope there, trying to balance out. And her sword is up in the air. The hangman. Oh, he's wrapped around a snake. Death. Temperance. It's got one foot in, one foot out. Testing the waters, sort of thing. 
the devil, it's got the Capricorn head, the chains. The tower's got the lightning. Look at that fire down the bottom. The star. The moon. The sun. I love the sun. I don't know what plants these are. They're not sunflowers. And I like that it's an adult on the horse. Judgment. And the world. I love that it's got each season at the side. Okay, so moving on to the suit of wands. So it's got like, like the number of the card and like a symbol for the wands. This is a tree branch in this one. of wands. She's got like a catapult around her ankle. She's got the globe there. Three of wands. It's nice because this looks like a hand but it can also be like a like a not a tree it could be like a tree branch sort of thing a wide tree branch. And they're waiting for the ship to come in. It's four of wands. So it's like conflict here. It's a victory card. It's got the reef and stuff. Seven standing the ground. So this person looks like they're sprinting fast, you know, flying at speed with the birds. Nine of Wands. And Ten of Wands. It's an interesting depiction of the Ten of Wands. I guess it's a, a, a burden trying to untrap this bit of string around the antness. So you've got the page, the knight, just the horse. And I love that it's got red and fire, you know, for the element of wands. Queen of Wands. It's like a sun a cat and the king of wands it's just like a flame for his head so onto the suit of cups ace of cups two of cups three four of cups this one five of cups like dark card. Six of cups. Seven. Look at all the choices there. Then that snake could mean that not all choices that are out there are good for you, you know? It's up to you to select the right choices. The person's walking away from something that no longer serves them. Nine of Cups. Interesting depiction. And the Ten of Cups. Sun and Stars. So you've got the Page. The Knight. The Queen of Cups, which is a big fish. And the King of Cups, which is also a fish. So moving on to the Suit of Swords. You've got the Ace of Swords, Two of Swords, Ooh, look at that, Three of Swords, the Heart. That's quite a deep wound. Four of Swords taking a rest. Oh dear. Five of Swords. Six. I guess for the Seven of Swords, the fox is quite a cunning kind of creature, aren't they? And you've got the Eight, you know, even though she's bound, it's quite loosely bound and she can always unfree herself from that bound if she wanted to. You've got the Nightmare card and the Ten of Swords. So you've got the Page, the Knight, 
Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. Let's move on to the final suit, which is the suit of Pentacles. We've got the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, I love how this person's got two hands, so they're really juggling there. Three of Pentacles. Person's holding on tight to their assets or their money. Five. It's an interesting depiction of the Five of Pentacles. So there's three of them, but it's only cut it into two, so one person's not going to get anything. The Six of Pentacles, Seven, this person's perfecting their skill and working hard. Oh, I love this Nine of Pentacles, she looks so elegant. You know, her dress is full of pentacles, she looks like she's luxurious, you know, well-to-do, quite comfortable, beautiful. And she also looks quite natural. The house is made out of natural wood, kind of earthy feel to this card. And you've got the Ten of Pentacles, different generations of elephants. So you've got the Page, the Knight, the Queen, the King. And this is the, oops, which is upside down. This is the, um, the extra card, which is the Traveller. I mean, it could also represent the end of the journey for the fall, really, because he's completed his journey and, and I'm sure that he's got notes where he's going to learn from what he encountered. Okay, so before I shuffle the cards and give you my first impression, let's talk about a deck that I like to pair it with. It's this deck here called the Curious Creatures Tarot by Christiane. So the reason why I'd like to... to um, pair these two decks together is because you know they've both got the word curious and and they're both kind of like animal kind of hybrid decks so I thought that they'd go together in my mind but let's see if they go together visually so I guess they can work really I mean, even though the um, Curious Travel Tarot has got people in the deck, the Curious Creatures doesn't have people, it's just hybrids, you know, animal heads on human bodies. So yeah, so. But I think they kind of go, that they've both got like a small border. Okay, one's kind of pastel colours and the other one's not, but I do think they've kind of got a Good feel together. And I think they look well. Well, I think they work well together, I should say, rather than not well together. Just... And also, it, you know, it will give me a chance to work with this deck because the um, Curious Creatures deck, I think I've only worked with it for a short period and I want to kind of start working with it again so this would be an excuse for me to work with it when I work with the Curious Travel deck. Okay, so let's give this deck a shuffle and see how it shuffles. I always can't, I kind of, I'm not a great fan of linen finished decks only because I'm an overhand shuffler and I, I find that the cards are slightly slippery. But I guess if you're a bridge shuffler or a riffle shuffler, this will be your dream because the cards are really kind of, they really flex back into shape. So they'd be brilliant for riffle and bridge, bridge, bridge shuffling. But as an overhand shuffler, it's slightly challenging to shuffle. But look at that noise, click, click, click. Shuffles really smoothly, love it. What are my first impressions of this deck? I really like it. Um, it's different to what I, I assumed it would be. I, I haven't looked at any other videos on this because I didn't, I didn't want to spoil my surprise. But I thought it would be more animal based, but there are, or hybrid animals like there are in the Tower of the Curious Creatures, but they are actual humans in here as well, which I like. And I also like 
you know, the, the size of them. I mean, they're not large, like an oracle size, but they're a bit bigger than tarot. So it, it makes the story that you see easier to read. You know, it's very right away inspired to me. And I think that if you're a beginner reader, because most of the symbols are there, I think this would be quite good for a beginner as well as a seasoned reader. I also like the kind of colour palette, you know, with the pastel. And it's also got a flash of colour in there as well. And I like how all the, the kind of darkish cards have got like greyish kind of backgrounds with bright stuff in there as well. It's just a nice deck. Um, I'm probably going to work with this deck when I go on holiday. I'm going on holiday next month. I'm going to Dominica. Not the, Dominic, not the Dominican Republic, but Dominica, which is next to St. Lucia, Martinique, kind of thing. So that's where I'm going to go for a couple of weeks next month. So this would be a good deck to work with. Um, it's also got kind of like an autumn vibe to it as well. So I think I might even make this an autumn deck as well. So I can, I can continue working with it when I come back on my holidays. I also like the guidebook. I like the way that it's laid out. And I like that it gives you like a picture, not the full picture, because if you look at the High Priestess, it's it just gives you a snippet of the picture. So you, you, you can kind of see what it's about. And I like that kind of element of surprise. So I got this deck from um, Hive's Bookshop, which is a UK independent kind of um, bookshop, an online bookshop. Um, because it was actually a bit cheaper than getting on Amazon at the time when I pre-ordered it. So I will leave a link for um, Amazon as well as the Hive bookshop. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.